with this particular story, I was doing some research and found a similar name, similar stories to two children. Both of them named Messiah. This one, this young, beautiful, bright, smiling young man was three years old. The other one was actually two years old. And looking up these stories, I actually got a little bit confused, but I did figure out which story was which. This particular story comes out of a place called Flint, Michigan. I don't know if anybody out there has ever heard of this place called Flint, Michigan. Not only do they have dirty water in Flint, Michigan, that they refuse to vote to have their tax dollars go to fixing the pipes, but I digress. But you also have dirty criminals in Flint, Michigan as well, who apparently don't value life. They don't value themselves and they don't value children because you look at this little boy smiling, beautiful little boy that could have grown up to become anything. And you got to ask yourself, what did this little boy do to deserve a demise like being shot, shot to death? What did he do to deserve that? I'm going to tell you guys a story. Little Messiah Williams was looking forward to dressing up as Baby Yoda, you know, from uh, Star Wars, looking to dressing up as Baby Yoda for Halloween, because y'all know Halloween is in a few days. And now due to the senseless thugs with gun violence, he would never get a chance to do that. And I have to make sure and clarify that y'all know it's not gun violence, it's thugs with gun violence. And I meant to also shout this out. Um, I hope Sharon Stevenson is still in the chat. Sharon, are you still there? If you are, let me know in the chat. But I wanted to thank you. I did get your donation and said, send in love and prayers to the babies and my AFC family. You, the, uh, let me see. You, the great J, Sharon Stevenson. Love my family. That is the AFC family. And... Sharon Stevenson, Sharon Stevenson got us started off with a sizable donation. And I don't want to tell you guys too much about what she sent, but I want to say thank you, Sharon Stevenson, in the chat. From my heart to yours, I truly, truly am honored. So thank you very much for always finding it in your heart and in your budget to donate that kind of money. Again, thank you to my brother, Dre the Dream. Thank you to my sister, Keyshawn. Said, not much, but it adds up. You are in my prayers. My sister, Keyshawn, Jay, you are in my prayers as well. And it is a lot. Don't don't too much worry about the amount that you guys send, but just seeing what's in your heart and in your budget. I know a lot of people are going through a lot of tough times right now, but I wanted to thank you. And I also want to thank uh, one other person that donated, but I can't see it because it's not it's not coming up. <sighs> My phone is a little slow. So Lynn, Lynn Eversley, if you're in the chat, I want to say thank you to you as well. So I did get yours, Lynn. So thank you very much. So here we go. Let's continue to keep talking about this story. You animals, you cowards, you shot a three-year-old baby, said Henry Williams, who I believe is the biological father. So I'm glad that he was able to speak out. Henry's son was shot and killed Thursday after their home was sprayed with bullets. I'm no criminal, but I know the street code, he said. You don't hurt children and you don't hurt women. You killed the savior, you killed the Messiah. You didn't even shoot where the person was that you were trying to kill. Now the shooting happened at Williams' home near the corner of Iowa and Oklahoma Avenues in Flint, Michigan, where Messiah was tucked in bed. I want you guys to brace yourself and hear these details. There were 67 bullets fired into my grandson's home, according to David Hurley, who was the victim's grandfather. Please, somebody let me know that you heard that detail and how many, what number of bullets was that? How many bullets did they shoot into this house, into this apartment? Because I am going to read that again, and I'm going to continue to keep specifying moments that I believe need more emphasis. I'm going to say that again. There were 67, 
67 bullets fired into this house that this little boy was sleeping in. Can everybody hear me? Hello? Is this mic working? Let me do a mic check. Let me make sure y'all can hear me. Oh yeah, you guys should be able to hear me. I think everybody can hear me. 67. 67 bullets. Here's my question. Who was that intended for? Who was that intended for? Who do y'all think was the target? Let me tell you guys a little quote from a very famous past rapper by the name of Tupac Shakur. Tupac Amaru Shakur wrote a song one time and he said, They say it's the white man that I should fear, but it's my own kind doing all the killing here. Do you guys remember that song? And it's funny how we continue to keep saying it's the police that's holding us back and harming us and taking us out each and every day. They say it's our our everyday white people that are out here with guns and trucks hunting us down and shooting us down in the streets like dogs, right? They continue to keep saying that our president is racist and he he hates all of us and he's doing all of these bad things to us and all of this stuff, right? We continue to keep putting out these narratives with no factual proof. None. But one thing that you do know is true is that we have this thing called the street code. Yes? Black people have this thing that black people created called the street code saying that if you know somebody has done something wrong and they are black, then you are not to report it to the authorities. That's the street code, AKA snitches get stitches. But it's funny how they say the street code is meant to protect women and children. But what does that mean for these young men? These boys, these men, these black men, huh? If you're talking about Black Lives Matter, why can't Black Lives Matter to black men first? Just like the AFC, we advocate for children first. Why can't black men advocate for black men first? If black lives truly matter. How many people believe that all lives matter? How many people believe that black lives matter? Matter of fact, how many people believe in the chat that are listening right now believe that babies' lives matter, huh? Does anybody believe that these children's lives, like Messiah Williams, do y'all believe his life mattered? If you believe his life matters, you don't have to be afraid to say so in the chat. Because if that's the case, thank you, hashtag Thug Zoo, because you know I'm getting ready to go there. But if his life truly mattered, then one would have to ask, why does somebody value whomever his father or whomever it was that they were gunning for? Why is it that they value another black life so little that they were willing to end that black life at any cost? And with the fact that when it was 67 bullets, it was more than likely multiple people that were involved and probably gonna be multiple people to go to jail. So you're talking about a baby dead, a adult that they were probably trying to kill and murder that I'm not sure that they did, and at least two to three other black men that are gonna to go to jail for life behind this. But we're not gonna point the finger at ourselves and say, this is some shit that we could fix. 67 bullets and I'm gonna let y'all hear what the biological father had to say because I'm not gonna lie I was happy to hear that there was a biological father involved that he's that he was there he spoke out but I'm gonna tell y'all I didn't like what he said because he said the least you could have did was hit your target and I'm like what how not, not only the fact that he said that but the fact that you you could have just been like the violence needs to stop, not hit your targets, 
hit your enemies. Go for who hit who you're actually gunning for. 67 bullets. Dozens of family members came out in, in support uh, of the family to remember Messiah, along with city leaders who want to make sure that they get that the family gets justice. And they said, all of us have to champion Messiah and his legacy, said Flint Mayor Sheldon Neely. We have to go forth and find the people who did this heinous crime. Police Chief Terrence Green believes it was, tar it was a targeted attack. I've already told you guys it was a targeted attack. This was not random. 67 bullets is not random. He says it's only a matter of time before they find the people responsible. Turn yourself, turn yourself and show some type of remorse. I think he meant turn yourself in and show some type of remorse. And turn yourself in because we're coming for you. At this time, there are three persons of interest in this case. So I was right. I was absolutely right. Let me give a shout out. Thank you for rejoining the channel membership. Patricia, June, Sierra in the building. Thank you so much. And also, I want to say hi to all of you guys who are listening right now. Don't forget to please click the thumbs up. It does help share our stream. And I don't want to have to keep saying that to remind people. But I do have to remind you guys because I know sometimes people come in and they're just hearing this for the first time. But I do want to say thank you guys for being here to hear his story. To Miss Nisi, if you are out there. Said, for the babies, keep me in your prayers. Oldest G son was shot uh, Sunday and he's still with us. Wow. Can y'all, if y'all got some love, man, can y'all please show Miss Nisi right there in the chat and show her some love by just putting a prayer hands up in the chat. We got so much going on in this world and thank you for your contribution, but thank you more for your love and for your message. Thank you, Miss Nisi. Just put a prayer hands up in the chat, man. That is that is just so much going on. Dang. At this time, they have three people of interest. So you have those three people who are probably going to go to jail for life once they're caught. You have a dead baby. And then you have the person that they were gunning for. That's five black people. Also, I want to give a shout out to... Make this go viral TV in the building. Make sure you guys check them out on Facebook as well, please. Excuse me, not on Facebook, but uh, on Facebook and YouTube. That's what I meant to say, but shout out to you. Genesee County Sheriff's Sheriff Chris Swanson says local law enforcement is doing everything that they can do to track them down. We need to provide closure to this family. We need to bring them justice and we need to send a message. You know, because the full force of the law enforcement, the, the full force of law enforcement, the authority and every uh, complement of investigation and tools that we have are in process right now. Henry also read in a statement from Messiah's mom, who was too heartbroken to read it herself. You monsters shot up a house that you knew was full of kids. Bookmark that full of kids. You saw the whole front yard full of toys and still went through with your evil plan. I just want you to know that you took the most innocent life. The family is also advocating for what they're calling Messiah's Law, which would put a mandatory life sentence for anyone convicted of shooting into a home and killing a child. I got to tell you guys this. It's kind of hard to disagree with them trying to put forth a law like that. But I'm going to tell y'all, I have some harsh opinions about this. And I'm going to be real with y'all after I show y'all these news videos. But let me give you the fair usage. Then we'll proceed forward. Let's get it. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. All right, we're just getting this thing started. So if again, don't forget to click that thumbs up. I want y'all to listen to the biological father. Let me know if you guys can hear this. Here we go. You animals, you cowards, 
You shot a three-year-old baby. All little Messiah Williams was looking forward to was dressing up as Baby Yoda for Halloween. And now due to senseless gun violence, he will never get that chance. Henry Williams' son was shot and killed Thursday after their home was sprayed with bullets. I'm no criminal, but I know the street code. You don't hurt kids and women. You killed the savior. You killed Messiah. You didn't even shoot where the person was that you were trying to kill. This I'm going to rewind that so y'all can hear that again. And I'm sorry. I know this dad is going to probably be mad at me. But I want y'all to hear what he said because I'm going to go off on it after I show y'all the videos. Let's hear it again. I know the street code. You don't hurt kids and women. You killed the savior. You killed Messiah. You didn't even shoot where the person was. Where is the logic in that? You don't kill women and children. Y'all heard that, right? They, they believe you don't kill women and children. So I guess it's just... It's just free reign on black men? Huh? Is that the message that we're putting out there? Really? Huh. It's kind of interesting. If black lives really matter. That's kind of curious. You hmm. don't hurt kids and women. You killed the savior. You killed Messiah. You didn't even shoot where the person was that you were trying to kill. The shooting happened here at Williams' home near the corner of Iowa and Oklahoma Avenue in Flint, where three-year-old Messiah was tucked into bed. There were 67 bullets fired into my grandson's home. This here represents 65 of those 67 bullets. Dozens of family and friends came out Sunday to support the family and to remember Messiah, along with city leaders who want to make sure this family gets justice. Let me ask you guys a question. Y'all were asking, who were they trying to shoot? I want y'all to post in the chat who y'all believe that they were trying to shoot. Because I personally believe that whomever that the people were going for, they were at the correct house that they believed that they were trying to shoot. They shot 67 times. To me, that shows intent. That shows that that um, that they must have felt pretty confident that they were at the right place. So I would have to ask who lived at that house. And I think that will let us know who they were actually going for. Do y'all agree or disagree? I don't know if the dad lived there or the mom lived there. Whoever lived at this house that got shot up, I believe... The adult was the target, but let's keep going. But we have to do more. All of us, all of us has to champion Messiah and his legacy. Police Chief Terrence Green believes it was a targeted attack. He says it's only a matter of time before they find the people responsible. Show some sense of remorse and turn yourself in because we're coming for you. At this time, there are three persons of interest in this case. Genesee County Sheriff Chris Swanson says local law enforcement is doing everything they can to track them down. Because you know the full force of law enforcement, the authority and every complement of investigation and tools that we have are in process right now. Williams also read a statement from Messiah's mom who was too heartbroken to read it herself. You monsters shot up a house that you knew was full of kids. You seen the front yard full of toys and still went through with your evil plan. I just want you to know you took the most innocent life. And the family is now advocating for what they are calling Messiah's Law, which would bring a permanent life sentence to anyone convicted of shooting into a home or a car and killing a child. In Genesee County, Rachel McCrary, WNEM TV5. But there was a GoFundMe. So here we go. The GoFundMe, if you guys are looking for it, is under Messiah's Homegoing. It is organized by Cheyenne Durbin, who is the organizing fundraiser or the organizing person on the fundraiser. They were asking for $10,000. They have so far collected uh, almost $7,000. Okay. That's where, <coughs> that's where the GoFundMe is currently. But I'll say this. Like I always say, from the moment our children are born, 
we know that this world presents very cruel things and things we cannot plan for, okay? Everybody should understand because I'm gonna continue to keep talking about this. Just as sure as that we are born, we will die. And no one knows the day, no one knows the hour, nobody knows what's gonna happen, how it's gonna happen, right? We all have to have life insurance from day one. If you do not have it from day one, get it on whatever day that you listen to this story, but please get life insurance on yourself, on your children. Make sure your family members have life insurance because you just don't know. I lost a family member and I gotta tell you guys, and I love my aunt, and um and sadly you know it would it would have been nice if we had and maybe they maybe they do i think they might be trying to work that out but i could just tell you guys that it's very very crucial for us to think about these unplanned things because they will happen and we don't know when we don't know how but us being parents we can definitely make sure that we give our children a chance and everybody should have life insurance on their children. If you don't know, go to Gerber, Gerber Life. The Gerber Life program is very cheap to get. Make sure you guys check that out, okay? But I definitely wanna to continue to keep talking about that. But I do hope that they get justice for this little boy. The fact that 67 bullets came into this house and the fact that we now know that there were more children in this house and there potentially was probably adults in the house. So whomever was in the house was probably a target and made these other kids target because of whatever that adult did. We don't know the details, but I'm sure they'll come out soon. But we've seen this story play out too many times. Just like when you see a lot of movies that follow the same narratives. Eventually, you're going to see these things. You're going to realize, oh, this is what's going to happen. This is what this means. You see the story play out so many times and you're able to make your own judgments. And I, but I can tell you guys this. This beautiful soul. This little boy that y'all see on my screen, Messiah Williams, he deserved an opportunity to grow up and become something great. Regardless of what his parents were doing or anybody else, I believe that that young man deserved an opportunity and it's sad that his life was robbed of the opportunity to grow up and become something great. And for that, I say, young king, young prince, Messiah Williams, RIP, young soul. May God rest you. Make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe to the AFC podcast, please. Hit that thumbs up. Let me see. Justice for Messiah. My little cousin deserves justice. He didn't deserve for this to happen. Those three damn cowards. And thank you, J. Uh, let me see. Is that J. Third? J. Red eight eight one zero. So thank you very much, J. Red eight one zero. Appreciate that. I'm not the biggest fan of Henry, but y'all y'all can't put it all on him. But like I say, I mean, I feel like somebody knows something. But I definitely can't, um, and hopefully you understand where I'm coming from. I can't just sit and rest on no snitching. I'm not telling. I can't just rest on that. So if people know something and they're not saying nothing, then I think that they're just as guilty. Let me go ahead and move on to our next story, which is going to be. Woo, this is going to piss some people off. How many of you guys? Let, let me not even say that. That's going to get the channel flag. Let me not even say that. Mm, 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 mm. I got a lot to say about this rainbow story right here. So I think you guys might want to hold on to your rainbow panties. Because I got a whole lot to say about this particular story and the individual that y'all see on my screen. Oh, I hope that you guys don't get in your feels about this. Okay. Let me go ahead and bring up our next story before we close out on the very last story that we're going to do. Okay. I was able to find some pictures of this little boy. So just to let you guys know, we're on story number two. Let me say thank you to April MG. If you are listening, I got your $5 super chat. And I want to say thank you very much. And anybody else, if you want to contribute, then you guys know how to do that. We did get one more. And that is from my sister, Melly in the chat. Melly, where you at? Please shout yourself out. But Melly, if you are in the chat, I just got your cash out just now. And she said, God bless you. And I want to say, God bless you right back. So Melly Melly C in the chat. Thank you so much. 
Let me see. Let's open this back up. Let me pull my videos up. Oh, man. Did you guys hear about this story about the little boy that got beat with a tire iron? This is going yeah, to be a box of Lucky Charms. Yeah, put your rainbows up in the chat. This is going to be crazy. Because you guys know that I have actually talked about the level of violence that goes on with uh, lesbian relationships. It's just a fact. It is a fact. Matter of fact, let me, let me save it for the recording. This will be most of you guys' first time even seeing this baby boy's face because the news did not put his face out there. He is at no more... He is in no more risk of danger because he is posthumous. He did not make it. So I don't mind putting his face out there, okay? But we are going to talk about this particular story in a way that might not sit well with some of y'all's sensibilities. Oh, here we go. A lot of you guys have heard me put out the statistic, which is a very factual statistic, and I don't want people to get upset about what I'm saying. But we do know that lesbian relationships, the statistic says that they have a high level of domestic violence among all domestic relationships. So higher than men on men, higher than women with men, they are the highest rate of violence. Okay, the reason I bring that up is just to say that this story is a very heinous story. This story is not indicative on all rainbow relationships. But what I am saying is that this is something that we need to look at because this is a problem. Tallahassee police arrest a woman in a suspicious death of a three year old boy that y'all see right there. The news did not put out his face and they did not put out his name. He is posthumous, excuse me, I said posthumous. He's passed away because that's the wrong term. He has passed away. He is dead. He has been murdered. Arrest records detail a gruesome scene. And the woman that y'all saw, if y'all could even call this a woman, this young man that y'all see on my screen that I guess checks the box of a woman, but we're going to call this young man Talia Jefferson. Okay. And Talia Jefferson is the young man looking woman that is arrested in the killing of a three year old boy, confessed to the police that he, she beat him to death. This little boy that y'all see on my screen. Let me, let me get back to his picture. This individual right here beat a little boy, a three year old boy to death with a tire iron while he was brushing his teeth. This dude beat a three-year-old boy to death with a tire iron while he was brushing his teeth. And they also say that this little three-year-old boy was likely dead by the time that this young man took that little boy to the hospital. Talia Jefferson 23 years old, grown as hell, was arrested on Tuesday on charges of murder and aggravated battery in the death of that little boy. That little boy's name right there is Miguel Wright, if I'm not mistaken. Let me make sure I got that right. Miguel Douglas Emmanuel Wright. So my memory did serve me correctly. He was closer to about this age right here. That's baby Miguel. And Talia Jefferson lived with him and his six-year-old brother, both of whom suffered abuse in the past and one of their parents, according to court records. Tallahassee police arrested her in suspicion of the three-year-old boy's death. Arrest records detail a gruesome scene and during Talia Jefferson's interview with the investigators, she recalled seeing blood spray from the boy as she swung the tire iron at his head. <sighs> the 
Blood sprayed from his head as she swung the tire iron at him. <sighs> Talia Jefferson arrived at Tallahassee Memorial Hospital at 6.58 p.m. with the boy who had severe trauma to his head and face and was unresponsive with a body temperature of 88 degrees. He was pronounced dead six minutes later by medical staff who contacted police. Now Jefferson told officers that the little boy was standing on the sink and brushing his teeth when he fell off and struck his head on the toilet causing the porcelain to shatter. Ain't that something? So you mean to tell me this, in, this is yet another individual, another one, who tried to blame the death on this kid that they have fallen off of something. Can we just say this real quick? To all of the people out there who are probably going to abuse children and you just haven't been caught yet, just know that when you go to the investigators and you go to make up this concocted, cockamamie ass story, just know that us and the majority of us are not going to believe that these kids fell, quote unquote, fell off of something. Y'all are all telling the same bullshit story and I'm sorry, but we just don't believe you. Everybody saw about the kids fell off of something. I'm sorry. We're just going to think you're lying. Okay. Just want to throw that out there. But his injuries were not consistent with the fall described by that particular individual. Court records state hashtag not my words. He had severe cuts on his face and hands, bruises on his arms and legs and signs of older scars older injuries older scars on his shoulder and torso i'm about to say something that might piss y'all off here in a minute jefferson says she sent the boy to brush his teeth at around 3 30 p.m about 20 minutes after his older brother came home from school I want y'all to notate that time 3 30 p.m no one else was home at the time. She says she tried to care for him after the so-called fall for about 10 minutes before driving him to the hospital. But when investigators pointed out that her timeline did not add up, she admitted that she attacked him after she ordered him to get down off the sink. She said 3.30 p.m., but we found out earlier that she took him to Memorial Hospital at 6.58 p.m., which would mean that's more than three hours after the fact. So clearly that doesn't fall in line with the time frame. She said his refusal to climb down when told angered her, according to arrest reports. Jefferson said that he, she walked into the bathroom and retrieved the tire iron from a tool kit. Lord have mercy. Jefferson advised that she, he, she returned to the bathroom and threw the tire iron at him, striking him upon the side of the face. And that doesn't make any sense. She initially said that she struck him only once, but later admitted that she hit him several times, including after he tried to run away from her. Lord. Afterward, she hid the tire iron somewhere outside of the residence. She would admit that the boy was likely deceased prior to transporting him to TMH, the arrest report says. Jefferson indicated that he was unresponsive and that she had and, at, and that she had carried him out to the vehicle. She suspected that he was no longer alive. Hashtag, where is the biological mother at? Hashtag, where is the biological father at? I'm sorry, but another girlfriend 
does not make up for a biological father. And yes, y'all heard me say that. And I'm going to say it again. Because just as well as there is no individual that can take the place of a mother, there is no individual that can take the place of a father. No matter if they look like a man. Hello. Let's put some respect on biology for a moment. She also admitted that she had used physical force against the preschooler and his brother during prior incidents. She said that she was in a relationship with the parent of the boys and watched them about five times a week while the parent was at work. That's the mother. So the mom go to work five days a week and she leaves this baby in the hands of somebody who she liked being in a relationship with. Not a babysitter, not a proven caretaker, but just somebody you enjoy having sex with and you like laying up under and you like laughing and joking and giggling with, right? Not somebody who's qualified to be around kids. And for the life of me, I don't understand how these people can continue to keep bringing their children around somebody that they're in a relationship with and think that that qualifies this person to be the caretaker. Let alone the neck tattoos. But I digress. I know a lot of y'all don't believe that crazy people have neck tattoos. Maybe it's just a fashion statement. But I think most people that have face tattoos and neck tattoos have something about them that just ain't right. But it's just a personal opinion. Let me say thank you to Stephanie for you who sent in a $10 super chat, said late getting in. But look, I got to say thank you not only for clicking that thumbs up, but thank you for your $10 super chat. So shout out to Stephanie for you. Thank you very much. He, she didn't care because it wasn't her child. But you know what? Even boyfriends, mom's boyfriends don't care about these kids either because it's not their kids. But that doesn't give them any excuse to harm these kids. Not at all. Five times a week while mom was at work. She would indicate that the three-year-old boy was stubborn and say that he often required more strikes or blows than his other his older sibling. Previous incidents, let's talk about that. Previous incidents of abuse are under investigation by the Florida Department of Children and Family Services. The state agency has taken custody of the boy's older brother according to court records. So, if there is a record of previous abuse. How did they get to keep these kids? When there is a record of previous abuse. That is a huge question. And yes, that is a huge red flag. Because if they had evidence of previous abuse. Then that means they could have got these kids out this house. And could have potentially have saved these kids lives. Yes. The like 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 the lion killing the lioness cubs. That is absolutely correct. Shout out and thank you classy young man. You're absolutely right. What's going on to my brother Larry Jackson? Owes up. Shout out to my brother Larry in the chat. I see you, bro. Thank you. Why were the children still in the home? Thank you, Rochelle. Why were the children still in the home if they already had an open investigation? For previous abuse. And you can see the scars on the kids. Jefferson is currently being held with no bond. In the Leon County Detention Facility. During uh, Jefferson's first court appearance on Wednesday. He she said that she intends to hire a private attorney to represent her. Leon County Judge Stephanie Morris continued the proceeding until Thursday so her attorney could be present. In the wake of the charges, TPD is encouraging people to report child abuse by calling the police at 
8914204200 or crime stoppers at 850570tips or the Florida Abuse Hotline at 800-962-2873. And also Miss June Bennett has been posting the links for the National Child Abuse Hotline which is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, okay? We're going to come back to those screenshots here in just a moment. Let me go ahead and get the couple of news videos that were here, get those up, give you guys the fair usage. Let's talk about this. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use. It is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. And while you guys are here, if y'all would, we're only, we're really stuck right now. I don't know why we're stuck at, uh... 444 thumbs up. Can y'all get us to 700 thumbs up? We only need 200 people to click the thumbs up, please. Please find it in your heart to just show some love to these babies and just click the thumbs up. Candy said, Jay, thanks for helping these babies. By the way, I have neck tattoos. I know I'm cray cray. <laughs> thank you, Candy Cox, but thank you for more for your support for standing up for these babies and allowing them to have a voice. So shout out to you. Here's the news videos. Let's get it. New tonight, the woman accused of beating a three year old to death in Tallahassee will stay in jail for now. That's the word from a Leon County judge this morning who says the murder and the child abuse charges against 23 year old Talia Jefferson are justified. ABC 27 Chantel Navarro has been following this story for us today. Chantel, what's next in this investigation? Jefferson will be held without bond until her first pretrial hearing. Now tonight, what happened to three-year-old Miguel is bringing attention to a bigger issue. Held no bond until your the pretrial motion for detention can be heard in front of the trial judge. Okay. Okay. What do you mean? I don't have that. No, ma'am. I do not. 23-year-old Talia Jefferson in front of a judge on Thursday, where she was assigned a public defender in the murder of three-year-old Miguel. Court documents released on Wednesday show she confessed to beating Miguel to death with a tire iron on Monday. Documents show there were signs of prior abuse on his body, with Jefferson admitting she'd been physical with him and his older brother before. While these circumstances are rare, cases of child abuse in the Big Bend are not. Currently appointed to well over 700 children in six counties. The Guardian Ad Litem program in Leon covers the entire Big Bend. They're the people the court assigns children to after an independent investigation of abuse by the Department of Children and Families. Once their investigation is complete, the group works with volunteers to determine if the child can stay with a relative or will be put in foster care. It would be nice to think that child abuse was uh, on the decrease, but that's just simply not the case, particularly since we have been in this pandemic since mid-March. Sika Green is with the Children's Home Society. The organization handles case management, foster care, and operates a child protection team. Green says the Florida Abuse Hotline receives 15 to 20,000 calls a month. Now, they're only seeing about 3,000 calls monthly. Now we are in a space where many children are home doing hybrid. Uh, there is definitely more opportunity for, for frustrations to arise. Green says it's partially due to less eyes on those kids due to remote learning. Green says it's now up to the community to watch out and help these kids stay safe before another tragedy happens. Green says if you see a child thinning, has bruises or flinches at the touch or the sound of their name, that could be signs of abuse. If so, they encourage you to call the Florida Abuse Hotline. Those numbers are on our website. That's WTXL.TV. For now, live in Tallahassee, Chantal Navarro, ABC 27. This 23-year-old Tallahassee woman faces murder charges accused of hitting a three-year-old boy with a tire iron while he was brushing his teeth. The Tallahassee Democrat reports Talia Jefferson was arrested after taking the child to the hospital with severe head trauma. Doctors pronounced the boy dead and medical staff called police. Officers say Jefferson initially told them the child fell while standing at the sink and hit his head on the toilet. But they say the injuries were not consistent with that story and there were signs of previous abuse. 
Jefferson lived at the home with the child, his six-year-old brother, and the boy's parent, who she was in a relationship with. Jeff Petrullis for CBS, Miami.com. And guys, I almost forgot I got one more video, and I think I did get the biological mom to speak out. So again, if y'all would click that thumbs up, share the stream. I think I did get that video, if I'm not mistaken. So we're going to take a chance, and I'm going to play this. Here we go. By the time they arrived. Today, I talked to the Miguel's mother, Erica Jenkins. The two had been in a relationship for four years. Tonight, she says she's still trying to come to terms with what happened to her son. So just pray for us and stop speculating because I still don't know the full details of what went on with my child. And I'm still waiting to hear back from investigators on what exactly went on. It's important to know that court documents say that Miguel had other scars on his body consistent with prior abuse. Jefferson admitted to officers that she's hit the boy in the past, along with his other older sibling, who's now with DCF. Uh, you've come in contact with is a victim. Whoa. And I was very fortunate to find this video. Let me let y'all hear this again. This is the biological mother. Let me let, me let y'all hear this again. Let me let y'all hear this again. By the time they arrived. Today I talked to the Miguel's mother, Erica Jenkins. The two had been in a relationship for four years. Tonight she says she's still trying to come to terms with what happened to her son. So just pray for us and stop speculating because I still don't know the full details of what went on with my child. And How do you not know the full de- Why do you even have that damn- what do you call that thing on your head? Like, are you about to go bake a cake? Why are you wearing that on your head? It's bright and sunny outside. Just, why ask logical questions? Nonetheless, why do you not know what's going on with your child five days of the week? I worked. My daughter's mom worked. When we were raising our kid, we knew what was going on with our daughter 24 hours a day, seven days a week. How did you not know what was going on with your kid? Because you left your kid with a girlfriend and not a babysitter? A qualified caregiver? Huh? Because you wanted to save some money. We is out here struggling. But you continue to keep making kids. Huh? You continue to keep making kids. So why do broke people continue to keep making kids? Am I am I wrong for asking that question? Huh? Maybe I am. I don't know. She's still trying to come to terms with what happened to her son. So just pray for us and stop speculating because I still don't know the full details. Now I want y'all to remember that they, before y'all feel sad for her, they are currently under investigation for previous child abuse. Can y'all post that in the chat? Under investigation for previous child abuse. Welfare checks, previous child abuse. The children had scars and bruising from previous child abuse. Hello with what happened to her son so just pray for us and stop speculating because i still don't know the full details of what went on with my child and i'm still waiting to hear back from investigators on what exactly went on it's important to know that court documents say that miguel had other scars on his body consistent with prior abuse jefferson admitted to officers that she's hit the boy in the past along with his other older sibling, who's now with DCF. Um, you've come in contact with is a victim. <laughs> That's why y'all need to be careful before y'all just come out and start defending these people, these individuals. I don't know why so many people are quick to talk about, why is you saying such disparaging things about our black people? Why would I not when they're taking advantage of the youngest, most defenseless group in America, our children. 
Why don't mo more people care about our children? They can't speak for themselves. They can't defend themselves. They can't feed themselves. They can't work and provide for themselves. They need us as parents to provide everything that they get. Right? Mookie Lolo sent in another donation and said, the mom had a relationship with the he, she for four years, but the boy is three years old. I knew somebody was going to catch that. Thank you. <coughs> she had it out for that baby from the start. I need to put that in the recording. Let me say that again. Mookie Lolo called out what I noticed, and I don't know if anybody else noticed this. The mom had a relationship with that individual for four years. What's wrong with that picture? Oh, that's right. The little boy is three years old. This person in the relationship with the mom for four years, but you have a three-year-old kid, and I'm assuming that that individual doesn't have the biological tools to be able to provide the seed that that mother would need to create that baby. Huh? Hmm. It's a little bit curious as far as a motive, don't you think? But let me also tell you guys this. The two officers interviewed Jefferson on video after she decided to waive her, he, she's Fifth Amendment rights. Based on Jefferson's timeline of events, she would have arrived at the hospital at around 4 p.m. As noted, it was nearly 7 p.m. when she actually arrived at the emergency room with the little boy. The affidavit then says, after officers confronted Jefferson, with the three hour gap in her story and that the injuries were inconsistent with the fall that she described, she admitted to using a metal tire iron and hit the boy several times in the head with a tire iron and watched the blood spray from his head. Damn. When officers asked Jefferson if she used physical punishment on the boy before, she said that he was stubborn and often required more strikes or blows than his older sibling. And I want y'all to remember that this little boy was three years old. He was three years old. I am so curious to find out I am so curious to find out what uh, Department of Children and Family Services is going to end up finally reporting as far as on that previous abuse. But it seems very, very likely that there was already a built-in motive. And that motive was the fact that this woman had got cheated on with the fact that this woman had a lust for the male uh, physical, the male nature. Yes. And had sex with the father and created this kid. And since they were in a relationship, that would mean that the mom cheated on the girlfriend. And the mom is acting like, well, I don't know why this woman will freak out on my kid when she already knows that you created this kid out of infidelity. Yes, I think that would probably be a motive that most people would understand. Oh, yeah, that's right. The reason that this person committed murder is because you cheated on them. That's at least a motive and it doesn't make it right. But it does give us a motive. It does give us some closure to understand what was going on in this feeble head, pea brain individual's mind. With half her eyebrows cut off, you can clearly tell that that idiot is stupid. But nonetheless, it doesn't matter what was going on in this relationship. Matter of fact, let me back this up and show you guys this screenshot from the biological father on Facebook. And he said, how the F you gonna beat my baby? And that's from the biological father. I would love for him to explain how we even get to this point. 
how you end up sleeping with this with this woman that's in a relationship with a whole female. You end up making a baby by her. But let me tell you guys this, because this is very important as well. So y'all can hear from the biological father. The biological father on Facebook, and y'all can read this. Do y'all need me to make that bigger? You probably do. I'll make it bigger for you. Let me blow this up on the screen so you guys can read a little bit more of what I saw on Facebook. Here we go. Let's read this together. The biological father said, I hadn't seen my kids since Corona started. Going through this custody battle, I called TPD five times to do welfare checks each month until they told me they would no longer go. It's a civil matter. I didn't even know where they even stayed. I feel like I wasn't there for my baby. And if it wasn't for my sister, I wouldn't have spent the little time we had together. If DCF was called, why didn't they been take my babies out that situation? The system failed me and my son. And now my baby is effing gone. Well, I can tell you guys this. You could definitely tell that the school system failed the father because this nigga don't understand what punctuation is. At all. I don't know. When did we when did we just say, you know what, screw punctuation? When did we start doing that in America? I can't even read these sentences half the damn time. But this is what the father said, and I want y'all to understand that the father seemed like he wanted to see his kid, and based on what his statement is, the mother prevented him from being able to see his kid. All the while, the mother let his kid stay with a girlfriend who was upset at him and her for this kid even coming to existence. What is wrong with these niggas? Say it so you can hear me. This is nigga activity. Nigga is as nigga does. Sleeping with these irresponsible chicks with no type of protection, which leads to STDs and babies. You leave your kid with an unqualified caretaker that's already mad at you and him and wonder, well, our eyes don't know how this situation came about. We have no idea how this situation came about. And you know what's crazy, even crazier? Is why do you make it seem like you had no options to take your kid somewhere, ma'am, Erica? You had no options to take your kids anywhere, but the dad wanted to see his kid and you refused to let the kid, the, the dad see his kid. And the only way he got to see his kid is because his sister stepped in and said she wanted to see the kid. And then on the side, she let the dad see the kid on the side. That's a damn shame that men like him and like me would have to go through some stupid stuff like that. absolutely ridiculous I think the dad the kid would have stood a better chance in the dad's care but instead you left it with this disgruntled girlfriend boyfriend that you were in a relationship for four years in this real entanglement huh why the kid is three years old but you've been in a relationship for four years I think that everybody in this situation was selfish. I think that everybody in this situation was selfish. And I think that everybody thought about their personal pleasures before they thought about this beautiful little kid that they all brought into this world. He did not ask to be here and they abused him to death. He did not deserve that. And for that, I hope he gets justice. I hope this baby gets justice. I hope the dad gets justice. I'm not mad at him, even though, like I said, you know, 
I feel like everybody kind of played a role in causing this situation to come about. But nonetheless, it still doesn't make what happened to this boy right. I do want to wish Miguel Douglas Emmanuel Wright, three years old, young prince, R.I.P. He didn't deserve this. He deserves justice, and we hope he gets it. I hope they do more of a full investigation, investigate the mom, and investigate the girlfriend acting as the boyfriend. They both need to be punished for what they did. This is your boy DJ Just J with the AFC. This is not a me thing. This is a we thing. We got to start coming together as parents and as the community in America. We are all Americans and we got to do better. Like I said, I know some of y'all going to be in y'all feelings, but I'm telling you, this ain't the night to piss off my moderators or me. So just mind your mouth. And if you're not sure, then just keep some of your little snide comments to yourself, right? Just saying, y'all better start putting these kids first because if you're not, then we're going to get you up out of here. Put these children first. Your priority should be these children. If you're getting mad at me because I didn't talked about the rainbow community or you get mad at me because I didn't talked about a black woman or a white woman or whatever, then your anger is pointed in the wrong direction. We got one more story we got to talk about before we close out. We got 936 people watching, but we only have 500 thumbs up. Can we reach a goal of 700 thumbs up? I think that would be awesome if we could do that before we close out. We have another very important story to talk about. We have court documents we got to look at. We got news clips that we got to show you guys. This one's going to be a little bit longer. But I'm going to be a little bit shorter with my commentary so I can let you guys listen to more of these news stories, okay? But we got to talk about these hillbillies that y'all see on my screen right now. Matter of fact, I got I got a name for them. I got a name for them. Let me show y'all something. Let me show y'all something. Let me say thank you, Diane Weed. Said, keep doing God's work, Jay. Proud to be a part of the AFC. And Diane Weed, not only thank you for your $45 super chat, goodness ooh, that's a lot of super chat and i appreciate that diane like if you if it's anything over 25 like if you could i i'll take it however you you want to donate it but if you could send the larger amounts to paypal or venmo or cash app it would help a little bit more because youtube takes 30 percent of that and i don't want them to take 30 percent of what you're trying to contribute let me say thank you again to melly uh, see in the chat and also thank you to Lala Scott Lala Scott if you are out there listening Say hashtag baby's life matter in the forefront. Keep up the great work Lala Scott. I got your Venmo So if you're listening, I want to say thank you very much Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh Lordy Yes, I just got it and let me hit that like button on that uh, Venmo boom so you should get your notification. So thank you very much. I think I got the news videos. Maybe I didn't. Did I not? No, apparently I didn't. There we go. I got a name for these individuals, man. Y'all got to hear this. There are my news videos. All right, here we go. <sighs> Hold on. Let me get my... I guess I got to get my... Uh, News story up here. Here we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be our last story of the evening. So click that thumbs up. Try to get us to 700 thumbs up if you guys can. Okay, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk about these two squid billies that y'all see on my screen they're not even hillbillies i'm gonna call them squid billies because that's what they look like they look ridiculous and we're going to talk about this and this story comes out of connecticut of all places i don't hear very many stories come out of there right but nonetheless a connecticut man was arrested last week after allegedly forcing his stepson not his biological son so again mob's boyfriend Yes, 
These two squid billies that y'all see on my screen right here, that's what we're going to call them. Squid Billy number one and Squid Billy number two. This idiot forced his stepson to step on thumbtacks. I don't know if you guys are familiar with thumbtacks. These little sharp things right here. I don't know if y'all can see that. Thumbtacks. I call them squid billies because you have to have a squid billy mentality to even think to do something this freaking stupid. That's just weird. Like, why would you even think to do something? Like, what's your punishment going to be? Like, I think because I come from a spanking background, maybe I understand spanking to a certain extent. I understand uh, making kids uh, do physical activities as a discipline or punishment. His punishment was forcing his stepson to place his bare foot on thumbtacks. But wait, it gets worse. Not only did he do that, but he forced his stepson to drink Louisiana hot sauce. Hot sauce, Cholula, Louisiana, whatever it is, he forced him to drink hot sauce until the boy threw up. And on top of that, they locked this boy in a laundry room and forced him to live in a dark, Laundry room for months. For months. Let me get this squid billy number one on the screen. That is Kevin Grant, 31 years old, grown ass man, began abusing his stepson in June after one of the boy's siblings got hurt while playing. And that's according to an arrest uh, a warrant acquired by the news. The stepson had been watching TV in the living room when his younger brother fell and struck his head on a glass table. The stepson told the authorities. The child's mother, Caitlin Baptiste, which is... Uh, let me see. Right here, Squid Billy number two. That's Caitlin Baptiste. The child's mother, Caitlin Baptiste, then took the injured boy to the hospital and when Grant, the stepfather, got home, he allegedly beat his stepson severely with a belt before grabbing him by the neck and throwing this boy across the room. Ladies and gentlemen, this story is about to get a little bit worse, so brace yourselves. The stepson told authorities he was then made to stand in a corner for a week with his head facing the wall according to the warrant. I'm going to say that again. He forced him to stand in a corner not for a matter of minutes, not for a matter of hours. He specifically said a week, W-E-E-K, week, seven days, with his head facing a wall, according to the warrant, he allegedly wasn't allowed to even sit down to eat and at night. Grant allegedly made the boy sleep by himself in either the garage or in a trailer that the family owned. After a rough, after roughly a week, Grant allowed his stepson to come back inside, but for the next four months, he allegedly made him stay in a locked laundry room, letting him out only to eat, to use the bathroom, and to do schoolwork, according to the warrant. Hashtag not my words. Is this turning some of y'all guys' stomach yet? Is this making you sick? Or is anybody pissed off out there yet? We got more. During this time, 
Squid Billy number one, abuse allegedly continued to escalate. The stepson claimed that at times, Grant forced him to drink cups of hot sauce until he vomited. He forced him to drink cups of hot sauce until the boy threw up. And if you have a weak stomach, I know that's already bad, but I'm going to warn you guys, I have a little bit of extra information to tell you that I'm going to tell y'all that if you can't handle this, you might want to click off because I got more gruesome details to tell you because it's more nasty and disgusting than anything. But here we go. After the boy, y'all, I'm warning y'all, it's about to get bad. After the boy threw up, he was made to eat his own vomit. I'm not going to even read that again. He also accused grant of making him stand on a ladder with one foot while grant placed thumbtacks on the ladder steps and on the floor some people just don't need to be living in this world The boy claimed that he couldn't hold his foot up any longer and he was forced to step on the tax, causing his foot to bleed. He also accused Grant of placing, oh Lord. Oh Lord, I forgot about this detail. Guys, it's about to get worse. I'm surprised that this boy lived through this. I'm telling you, if you can't handle this, this might not be the night to be listening. So you got about five seconds. I got a little bit more to tell you. So if you're ready, here we go. He also accused Squid Billy number one, Kevin Grant, of placing a bottle rocket inside his mouth lit it and ignited a bottle rocket inside of his mouth guys a firework he put a firework in his mouth. A bottle rocket firework. Place it in his mouth. If y'all don't know what a bottle rocket is, imagine a bottle. And imagine a long little stick that you place inside the bottle that sticks out just far enough that the fuse is on the end. And what you do is you take a lighter. This ain't a lighter. But you take a lighter and you... You light the end of it, it starts to light that fuse, you take the bottle, you set it down, and the force, with that bottle rocket pointing upward, the force will almost, it's almost kind of like watching a rocket ship. That's why they call it a bottle rocket. And it shoots off, and all of the pressure goes inside the bottle and forces it upward. High in the sky, and then it explodes. That's what this idiot put inside of a child's mouth. You just can't be that level of stupid. You can't be that level of stupid. Even worse. 
he also forced the boy to kneel, get on his knees and kneel on top of uncooked rice for an entire day and made him do push-ups until he could not move his arms. Man. Following contact with the Connecticut, Connecticut Department of Children and Family Services, the stepson, his mother, and two of his siblings left their house in early October to live with the stepson's grandmother. Social workers confirmed that a bed had been set up in the laundry room and that the stepson didn't appear to have any other bedroom in the house, according to the warrant. They also confirmed that the boy had scars on his cheek, apparently caused by the exploded bottle rocket. None of the four children in the house appeared to have experienced abuse, according to the warrant. Both Grant and his wife were arrested on October the 14th, which was about uh, 13 days ago. Grant was charged with risk of injury to a minor, second degree assault, intentional cruelty to persons, reckless endangerment, and disorderly conduct, according to a press arrest log uploaded by the N N Nagatuck, Nagatuck Police Department. The mother, Baptiste, who allegedly knew of the abuse and didn't do shit to stop it, was charged with risk of injury to a child, conspiracy to commit cruelty to persons, conspiracy to commit disorderly conduct, and second degree reckless endangerment. Let me ask you guys a question. How much do y'all think their bail was? I want you guys who are listening to the sound of my voice to take a moment and type in a number. What do you guys think their bail was? If you think their bail was 5K, type in 5, the number 5, and then the letter K. If you think it was 20K, type in 20 and then K. If you think it was 100K, type in 100K. If you think it was no bail, type in no bail. How much do y'all think their bail was? I'm going to let y'all take a educated guess. Well, time's up. Are y'all ready to hear this? After everything that you guys just heard, Grant was placed under a $25,000 bond while the mom is being held on a $10,000 bond, which if you get a bail bond, that'd be $2,500 for the stepfather and a $1,000 bail for the mom, according to the log. And they have since posted bail and they're out on bail and their next court date is set for November the 10th. Hashtag how sway how how those kids are still alive. Are you telling me that this fool and that other fool don't present a danger to those kids and you let them out on bail and what they did was equivalent to attempted murder? What they did is not abuse. That's not abuse. That's attempted murder. $25,000 bail. And they made bail. How is that even possible? How is that possible on the American watch? We are all Americans, regardless of if this is in Connecticut or freaking California. How do we allow this to happen on our watch? How does Connecticut allow this to happen? For these people to abuse this boy to that point, not only should the bail be so freaking high that they can't afford to get out, but it damn sure should be something more sufficient with what they are accused of doing. And what you wrote that I apologize, but please understand that my passion for these babies runs very, very deep, okay? Let me give you guys the fair usage and let me let you guys listen to the news videos.
federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use. It is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which does not infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. So again, to Christina, I want to apologize to you, and I want to apologize while we're live and while we're on this broadcast. Like I say, I misread what you wrote, or at least misinterpreted uh, what you wrote. So, you know, I do apologize for that. A Naugatuck couple was arraigned here at Waterbury Superior Court earlier this week on charges related to child abuse that came to the attention of DCF and Naugatuck police at the beginning of this month. The other day I seen two police cars up there and that's all I know. I mean, you know, it's a quiet neighborhood. The police activity at this house on Forest Street in Naugatuck, where nobody answered the door today. Friday, cops arrested 31-year-old Kevin Grant and his 29-year-old wife, Caitlin Baptiste, after one of the woman's children told investigators his stepfather abused him and that his mother knew about it. It's kind of a borderline on shock that it's, you know, so, so close and also it, it should never happen anywhere. According to the arrest warrant affidavit, the boy says Grant made him sleep in the locked laundry room of their home for four months as punishment for things the boy claims he never did. And the alleged victim said other abuse included being forced to eat spicy hot peppers and hot sauce until he threw up. It just makes you you cringe at something like it. The affidavit also claims the boy's mother and stepfather would only let him out of the laundry room so he could go to the bathroom, eat, or do schoolwork. You can't, there's nothing you can say about that. The torture allegedly also included making the child stand on a ladder with one leg extended. And at that point, Grant would put tacks on the step of the ladder so that when the child's leg got tired, he would be forced to step on them, causing his feet to bleed. Both Grant and Baptiste are free on bond. Baptiste and her three children were ordered to leave the Naugatuck home. Here in Waterbury, Tony Terzi, Fox 61 News. First up at 5 o'clock on this Wednesday, a couple under arrest accused of abusing a young boy. Naugatuck police say the boy's mother knew what her husband was doing and never stopped him. We do want to warn you that some of these specifics are really hard to hear. Channel 3 New Haven Bureau Chief Matt McFarlane is live outside the Naugatuck Police Department with all of the disturbing details. Matt. Well, Aaron, some of the allegations include being forced to sleep in a locked laundry room for a number of months, also kneeling on uncooked rice for an entire day. That's just part of it. The Department of Children and Families says they got an anonymous complaint back in the beginning of October, but when the boy told investigators that this abuse dates back to the summer. No one would answer the door at the Forest Street home. The home where Naugatuck police say 31-year-old Kevin Grant abused his stepson for months. I can't believe it. That I don't understand how the judge found it. After you hear the details, I don't understand how a judge can say, yeah, that deems a $25,000 bond. I, I don't get that at all. I don't understand how can you possibly justify that under Connecticut law code i don't get it he literally did these things to this child you know he deserves whatever he's going to get him and her that's because police say the boy's own mother 29 year old caitlin baptiste knew what was happening but didn't do a thing it's disturbing i mean you know you it's a nice, quiet neighborhood, and it's so disturbing that something like that could happen. While the two are now facing a number of charges, police say Grant wouldn't talk with them, and that he allegedly even tried to leave his house upon first learning DCF was investigating. And Baptiste allegedly said she wasn't aware of the claim, stating she's often not home because of work. But according to police, the boy said the abuse started in June. In an interview with the Waterbury Youth Services, the boy said he was forced to sleep outside in a trailer and then in the garage for five days before being moved to a locked laundry room where he stayed for months. It's alleged Grant and Baptiste would only let him out to go to the bathroom. During that time, the boy said his stepdad would make him need. 
Yes, if y'all didn't catch that, they are currently out of jail right now. Out on bond. Elon Rice for an entire day and forced him to do push-ups until he couldn't move his arms. He said the rice would stick to his legs and hurt for days. Another alleged punishment involved standing on one foot on a ladder with tacks on the steps and underneath it. When he couldn't hold his foot up any longer, he would put his foot down and step on the tacks, which caused his feet to bleed a lot. And in that same interview, the boy allegedly said his stepdad forced him to drink hot sauce to the point of getting sick, would make him drink cups of hot sauce, and that he would throw up stated he would have stomach pains. It's sad, sad. A child shouldn't have to go through that. Not at that, you know, at, at no age, it, it's, it's awful. Now, according to the court paperwork, investigators also noticed a scar on the boy's cheek. When interviewed, he told them that that had to deal with his stepdad and a bottle rocket. It was an incident that we're gonna tell you about coming up tonight at six. We're live with the mobile newsroom in Naugatuck. Matt McFarland, Channel 3. Eyewitness News. The new developing news, a couple is under arrest accused of abusing a child. Hello everyone and thank you for joining us. I'm Kara Sundland. Naugatuck police say the boy's mom knew what her husband was doing and did not stop him. Channel 3 New Haven Bureau Chief Matt McFarland is now live with our mobile newsroom outside of the Naugatuck Police Department with these disturbing details. Matt. Well, Kara, Naugatuck police were alerted to the allegations at the beginning of October, but they say the abuse had been going on for months. Now, 31-year-old Kevin Grant and 29-year-old Caitlin Batiste, though the two, they are facing a number of charges. According to investigators, it was inside the couple's forestry home where Grant was making the boy sleep in a locked closet for several months, along with allegedly punishing him by forcing him to kneel on tacks and even drink hot sauce until he had thrown up. Now he's charged with risk of injury to a child, assault, intentional cruelty to persons, disorderly conduct, and reckless endangerment. Naugatuck police add Baptiste, the child's mother, knew what her husband, the boy's stepdad, was doing. She's now facing a number of charges, including conspiracy to commit intentional cruelty to persons, along with conspiracy to commit disorderly conduct. Now, Grant and Baptiste <laughs> are both out on bond. They are due back in court next month, and we're going to have more on the story coming up tonight, starting at Eyewitness News at 4. We're live with the Mobile Newsroom in Naugatuck. Matt McFarland, Channel 3, Eyewitness News. Let me ask you guys this. We got about... One, two, three more news videos. Do you guys want to see these other uh, couple of news videos before I give my closing thoughts? Because we're getting ready to wrap up here in just a moment. But if y'all want to see these other news videos, I'll play them. But if you want me to go ahead and stop them and just give my closing thoughts, just type it in the chat and let me know. I hope they get what they, they deserve. You know, both of them. A young boy abused his stepfather is now under arrest and facing a number of charges. So is his mother. She's accused of knowing about the abuse and not doing anything to stop it. We want to warn you, these details are disturbing. Channel 3 New Haven Bureau Chief Matt McFarlane is live with the mobile newsroom outside the Naugatuck Police Department with the really horrifying details. Matt. Well, Aaron, the allegations include everything from making this boy drink hot sauce until he got sick, having him sleep in a locked laundry room for a number of months, to even lighting off a bottle rocket from his mouth. No answer at this Forest Street home, a place police say turned out to be a house of horrors for a young boy. Poor kid. I am just, I'm just so sorry for that child. That's all who I care about. Naugatuck police arrested the boy's mom, 29-year-old Caitlin Baptiste, and his stepdad, 31-year-old Kevin Grant, on a number... To answer your question, you said, why did they get out of jail? Because they had low bonds. He had a $25,000 bond. The mother had a $10,000 bond. So a bond of $2,500 and $1,000, that's $3,500 between the two of them. For a lot of people who might you know, have some, some funding or some family, wouldn't be that hard for them to come up with $3,500. That's exactly why the bail should have been a hell of a lot higher. Of charges, investigators say Grant abused and tormented the boy for months and that Baptiste didn't stop him. That's her child she bore. How dare she do something like that to her own child? The Department of Children and Families got an anonymous complaint at the beginning of the month, but the child told them the abuse dates all the way back to June. According to the boy, Grant allegedly made him sleep in a locked laundry room for months 
and that his stepdad and mother would only let him out to use the bathroom. Other punishments include being forced to drink hot sauce to the point of throwing up, standing on sharp tacks causing his feet to bleed, and kneeling on uncooked rice that would stick to his legs and hurt for days afterwards. You hear about it on, on TV and stuff like that happening elsewhere, but not in a quiet place like this. It's very disturbing. And there's more. When investigators noticed a scar on the boy's cheek, he allegedly told them Grant made him put a firework in his mouth and light it. Quote, Kevin replied to him, it's either he lights off the bottle rocket in his mouth or gets hit with the belt. Neighbors say they are shocked and sickened. It just broke my heart and this child is scarred for life. So I pray that somebody comes along and takes that whatever he endured in, the, in his home where he's supposed to feel safe. He overcomes this as he grows up. Now, according to police paperwork, the Department of Children and Families moved the boy and his siblings to their grandmother's house. As for the accusations, investigators say Grant did not want to talk to him. As for Baptiste, they say she initially denied knowing about these issues uh, and saying that she was often working and not always home with her children. The two of them. So she lied. Why is there a charge for that, too? That's perjury. That's lying. They are both out on bond, and they are due back in court next month. We're live with the Mobile Newsroom in Naugatuck. Matt McFarland, Channel 3, Eyewitness News. Heartbreaking story out of Naugatuck. A young boy abused, and now his mother and stepfather are under arrest, facing a number of charges. We do want to warn you, some of these details are really tough to hear. Naugatuck police arrested 29-year-old Caitlin Baptiste and 31-year-old Kevin Grant on Friday. According to investigators, Grant made Baptiste's son sleep in a locked laundry room for months. He would also punish him by forcing him to drink hot sauce until he vomited and kneel on uncooked rice and tacks for hours. As for Baptiste, police say she actually was aware what her husband was doing to her child and she did nothing. The news, as you can imagine, leaving neighbors just stunned and horrified. A couple is under arrest accused of abusing a child. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Kara Sundland. Naugatuck police say the boy's mom knew what her husband was doing and did not stop him. Just to let y'all know, I don't think that they released the age. They did say boy, but sometimes they'll try to leave it um, anonymous, like they won't even tell you the, the sex or the age just to kind of further protect the kid. Channel 3 New Haven Bureau Chief Matt McFarland is now live with our mobile newsroom outside of the Naugatuck Police Department with these disturbing details. Matt. Well, Kara, Naugatuck Police were alerted to the allegations at the beginning of October, but they say the abuse had been going on for months. Now, 31-year-old Kevin Grant and 29-year-old Caitlin Batiste, though the two, they are facing a number of charges. According to investigators, it was inside the couple's forestry home where Grant was making the boy sleep in a locked closet for several months, along with allegedly punishing him by forcing him to kneel on tacks and even drink hot sauce until he had thrown up. Now he's charged with risk of injury to a child, assault, intentional cruelty to persons, disorderly conduct, and reckless endangerment. Naugatuck police add Baptiste, the child's mother, knew what her husband, the boy's stepdad, was doing. She's now facing a number of charges, including conspiracy to commit intentional cruelty to persons, along with conspiracy to commit disorderly conduct. Now, Grant and Baptiste are both out on bond. They are due back in court next month, and we're going to have more on the story coming up tonight, starting at Eyewitness News at 4. We're live with the Mobile News. All right, that wraps up the news stories. Let me say thank you real quick. Uh, Queen, Queen H, I don't want to read your whole name. But Queen H, I just got your cash app, so I want to say thank you for your donation. I don't know if you're listening, but if you could, type something in the chat. Let me know that you heard me shout you out. But I want to say thank you for supporting the AFC and what we stand for. Let me give my closing thoughts by saying this. It's good the fact that this is almost kind of a positive story. It's a horrific thing to have to have gone through this from these particular individuals. But I do agree with what some, what some of the people in the chat said. And because these kids survived, I hope that the biological father is given an opportunity at full custody of these kids. And I hope that he could prove that he is worthy of that opportunity. And I hope that the biological father can represent us men in a dignable way. 
I don't even know if that's a word, but in a dignified way. That's I know that's a word, okay? But nonetheless, I think there is some positivity we could take away from this, but he is probably traumatized. This kid is traumatized, and I can only pray that he is able to grow up and become something great. But I definitely think that the courts failed with the low bail, and I hope that they don't equivocate this to a slap on the wrist because this is not the way this is not this is this is already not going the way that it should be going with such a low bail i don't think that they're going to take this serious just because the kid survived what they did to this boy was attempted murder that should never fly no matter what state and what jurisdiction you live in so i am asking for the people out there in Connecticut, this is a voting season. This is the time to step up in your local elections to speak out and say something and ask for harsher law penalties against people who hurt and abuse the most vulnerable and most defenseless of us, which is our children who live under our care and under our roof. Okay? These children cannot speak for themselves, nor can they defend themselves against the tyranny of mob's boyfriend and i know that they said that they're married but i'm gonna still put this under mob's boyfriend these squid billies need a lot of time in prison a whole lot of time i'd say twenty five thousand dollar bail uh give him 25 years in prison i think that'd be good enough I think he'd learn to listen he looks like they look like they do awesome they'd be swell in prison send him to prison 25 years i think and especially the mom. I mean, that's just egregious. The fact that you know it happened and you just let it ride out. You didn't care about your kid, ma'am. And for that, I don't think we should care about either one of y'all's future. Salute to that kid. Salute to the other kids. And I hope that they can grow up and become something great. Please make sure that you guys like, share, and subscribe to the AFC Podcast where we put our children first. From my heart to yours, I love you guys. Thank you for listening with an open mind and an open heart. Don't talk about the change. Be the change. That's really how we make change in this world. I love you guys and y'all have a blessed night. Peace. North Authentic Designer has some of the most glamorous and stylish handbags your girl has ever seen. So ladies, if you want to get fly, and fellas, if you want to take care of your lady, please be sure to go to www.norris915.com. www.norris915.com That's right, www.norris915.com Hello listeners, come mask up with Keyline Designs where you reap what we sow. We offer essential handcrafted face masks made with 100% cotton equipped with a built-in filter and a slot for refillable filters. Our masks have many uses like riding motorcycles, ATVs, while out in public places, outside exercising, lawn and gardening, and helps prevent the spread of germs. We offer bling, sports logos, monograms, many assorted fabrics and colors. We make child size masks starting at the age of two. Come join us today for the launch of our new website at keylinedesigns.com. Please be sure to like and follow our page on Facebook. Our links can be found in the description box of this video. Thank you.